So I did our thing. You know damn well it's book mail time. So let's get into it. You guys are going to be proud of this one, but I am terrified. I am honestly not ready for this next read. I've never been ready and I don't think I ever will be ready. But I will be devouring this book as soon as I'm done with my current series. Look what we got. Quite frankly, I don't even know what the fuck to expect from these books. I just know everybody's talking about them. I have definitely read my fair and share of Penelope Douglas and let me tell you, it is smut central. I don't even know if these books are dark romance. I have no, I don't even know anything about them, which is even scarier. I do have one question though. Is it all the same story? Do they all follow the same people? And am I missing a book? I think there's a thin one. All right, I'm missing Conclave and Fire Knight, which I think are very thin ones. Corrupt is the first one. I need to read the back real quick. I need to see what the vibes are. My boyfriend's older brother? Shut the fuck up. He's like that scary movie that you peek through your hands to watch. I immediately got the vibes. I understand. His handsome, strong, and completely terrifying? What the fuck else can I ask for? He's more concerned with the dirt on his shoes than me. <laughs> Period. Cannot wait to see how that unfolds. While I haven't had her body, I know I have her mind. I'm not fucking ready. Hold on. Hold up, 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 hold up. She put a few of my high school friends in prison and now they're out. We've waited, we've been patient, and now every last one of her nightmares will come true. Three? I'm sorry. Hold your fucking horses. Penelope? Relax. What does that mean? What the fuck does that mean? I'm in the middle of reading a different series right now and I might have to take a pause because, um, what did I just read? Hello, Iron Flame is coming out in seven fucking days and I need to know what the fuck the vibes are because are we staying up on the 6th and at 12 a.m. on the dot we go on the Kindle and we all read it? Are we rereading Fourth Wing right before the launch so it's fresh in our head? Like, I kind of want to reread it because, as you see, I tapped the shit out of this book. Like, are you kidding? I feel like we should all reread it just so it's fresh in our head. By the way, this is my limited edition copy. Everyone keeps asking me about it. I have not read it on this copy. I just read it on my regular one, but this is stunning. But let's be honest. On the 7th, as soon as the book fucking drops, you know I will be reading it nonstop. And I will devour it in less than 24 hours. I promise you that. I am a little bit more than halfway done with Keeping 13. And let's talk about it. Now, I am convinced that Johnny is a book boyfriend that simply does not exist. He is perfect in any fucking way, shape, and form. But I do have to tell you something. Half of these tabs aren't even for Johnny and Shannon. Gypsy literally makes me like cry in tears from laughter i simply do not understand how a book that deals with the topic of domestic violence and abuse can be this fucking funny like the scenes in this book with like johnny and gypsy or honestly just gypsy fucking hell the things that come out of his mouth i i don't even know how to comprehend I honestly could at this point just read about their friendship because that shit is so funny. I <clears throat> I'm just here for the vibes at this point. Addicted slash Callaway series order. Let's go. Listen up, kids. This right here is the reading order from bottom to the top. So take a screenshot before I explain everything to you. Hurry up. For those of you that are new to the Addicted Slash Galloway series, first of all, I'm jealous uh, that you're able to read this for the first time. You're gonna start off with the Addicted series that follow Lilo, aka Lily and Lauren. You're gonna say, you're gonna read Addicted to You, then Ricochet, and Addicted for Now. Then you're gonna take a break. And you're gonna read the spin off, which is the Calloway sisters, which is obviously Lily's sisters. You're gonna read Kiss the Sky first, which it follows Rose and Connor. And then you're gonna read Hot House Flower, which, fo which follows Daisy and Reich. Then you're like, okay, I miss Lily and Lauren. Then you're gonna read Thrive, which follows the same plot as in these two books, but from Lily and Lauren's point of view. So this book is gonna be the same as like a recap of these two, but from their point of view. Then you're gonna finish Lily and Lauren's story in Addicted After All. 
We're going to move on to finishing Rose and Connor's story in Fuel the Fire and Rike and Daisy in Long Way Down. Then you're going to finish it off with the epilogue novel, Some Kind of Perfect, which is told from every single person's point of view. And it's pretty much like an epilogue. And it follows like over a 10 year span. You're fucking welcome. When you guys told me that this whole book was filled with smut, um, I don't think I quite frankly believed you. But let me fucking tell you one thing. Court of the Vampire Queen is filled with smut. I am currently on page 164. And um, I'm pretty sure 160 of these pages were filled with smut. Um, chapter one is where it starts. I've never read a book where they got down to business in chapter one before. And it literally keeps going. Also, nobody told me that it was a three-on-one situation. Um, three guys, one girl. What the fuck? I also heard that there's like no plot in this book, but so far there is plot behind the smut but it did got kind of a little bit fucking weird where it's like about vampires so <laughs> slay already but it got a little bit weird where like um one of the guys like juices if you know what i mean was like magical and um i could not read that without fucking cringing i honestly hope you don't even know what i mean because it's just fucking cringe all around but besides that i am thoroughly enjoying this book. Thank you very much. Good morning, my little readers. Oh, we're currently reading Court of the Empire Queen. And let me fucking tell you, this goddamn book, I honestly feel like people on Goodreads are just like, unhappy with their lives because this has a pretty low rating on goodreads and i i don't know why i think people on goodreads just do not like anything at all because i am like two-thirds done with this book and now i feel like i could form a full-on opinion about it and let me fucking tell you this has smut and this has plot whoever said that this doesn't have a plot doesn't know what a plot means because this has fucking plot and i am interested in the plot that it has and the amount of spice this book has will have you fucking shaking once again still every single chapter is filled with some kind of spice in there and personally i am loving it there's never too much spice and i must know how this ends tonight let me show you exactly how much of a psycho crazy bitch i can be there you are i've been looking for you and I'd give up forever to touch you Cause I know that you feel me somehow I would have waited 500 I finished Court of the Moon Fire Queens And this book has spiked quite the controversy up here A lot of people say they loved it A lot of people say that it's too much smut, not enough plot Which I'm gonna say to that last sentence Impossible If you wanna read something with plot, go read fucking Agatar that has like four books in there Anyway, I still disagree. There is uh, there is plot in this book. What are you reading that you're saying that there's no plot? And if that's no plot, what kind of plot do you want? Yes, there is a lot, a lot of spice scenes in here. But there is also in the background, like, a lot of stuff is happening in the background. Like, the main character literally became a different person by the end of the book. And we watched it happen. Anyway, it gets a 4 star from me, not a 5, because, I mean, it didn't blow my mind, quite frankly. There wasn't, like, anything extraordinary, and I'm probably not gonna think about this book again. But it was a really fun read, let me tell you that. And I've read books that have all spice and no plot, and those are actually also fun. I don't know where I was going with that. The spice is the plot. I said what I said. We are T minus 9 hours until Iron Flame comes out. Today's Monday, obviously, which means it is a preparation for iron flame day i literally opened my fourth wing on a random page and as you can see i really like this one anyways i decided that i'm not gonna reread the book because i don't usually i've never in my life read a book and i feel like i never will but unless it's akatar but that's a different story um so i think i'm gonna go tonight right now um through the book and i'm just gonna read every single thing i tapped because i trust myself and my fucking opinions when I was reading this book and I'm hoping that everything important is tagged. I need to immerse myself back into this universe before I start Iron Flame. 
Anyway, tomorrow is gonna be a good day. It's like a reward. Good morning! And I say good morning instead of morning because Iron Flame is out! Along with Love Red Design by uh, Lauren Asher, but that's not here nor there. Now, do I have three orders of Iron Flame already on the way to my house? Yes, I do. Are we still gonna go to Barnes & Noble as soon as they open to get one? Yes, we will. So let's go. I just pulled up to Barnes & Noble and I think I'm the only crazy person around because there is absolutely nobody next to the store. They open in one minute. I just saw someone walk in, they're open. Do you see her? Because I see her. Look what's here. Also, she's fucking thick. This is 630 pages and oh my fucking god. I already know this is gonna be over before it even begins, which is traumatizing in itself. It's taking everything in me to not just peek at the last page to just see like what's gonna happen but like I, I won't i promise i won't i'll just sit here and admire her for a little bit though shh don't talk to me it might look like i'm physically here but in reality for the next three days or so i will be in a completely different world thank you this right here might be the best book mail of this year and we're gonna open it because I love you so much. First, we have a brand new book from Lauren Asher, Love Redesigned. I am so freaking excited to read it, but that's not what we're here for, and we both know it. We have a holiday edition of Fourth Wing. How freaking beautiful is this cover? Beyond obsessed. And we have another copy of Iron Flame, and I say another copy because I already have one. But you know what? There can never be enough. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. Holy fucking shit the fact that i'm even reading iron flame right now still feels a little bit surreal also yes i take off the jackets of the book before reading them and if you don't you're fucking sick thank you anyway we're 200 pages in now i am trying to read this as fast as i can but at the same time i'm trying to savor it i'm i'm confused about what i'm doing but i got like one thirst through the book in one day and let me fucking tell I'm not gonna spoil anything for you because obviously I'm not fucking cruel. But I will tell you this, Daddy Zayden is still a slay. Even though we don't see much of him because he obviously graduated, but she already knew that from fourth wing. Jared is still his old fucking self. This fucking dragon has me literally giggling like no tomorrow. The shit that come out of his mouth, I am so here for it. Oh, and fucking Dane um, is still keeping in his lane for now. For fucking now, being the key word. I could fucking smell the bullshit coming off him already. Also, it doesn't look like I annotated much, but this is my most annotated book to date. Like, there's so much annotation happening in here. It's honestly not even funny. I'm just gonna leave you with one quote, and if you started the book, you already read it. Love doesn't even have the decency to die. It just transforms into an abject misery. That's what this ache in my chest is, misery. Because love at its root is hope. Hope for tomorrow, hope for what it could be. Hope that the someone you've entrusted your everything to will cradle and protect it. And hope that shit is harder to kill than a dragon. And that's on fucking period. Rebecca? Wait, we didn't ask. We didn't ask for what the fuck I just read in chapter 25. Nobody asked for this. We would have been just fine without that bullshit. I am still trying to figure out what the fuck did I just read. And when y'all told me chapter 25 will have your jaw on the floor, my jaw is on a fucking floor. I just have one question. Is Violet gonna catch a goddamn break in this book? Because I'm getting real sick and tired of this poor girl getting thrown around. I've read what I needed to read and I cannot be subjecting myself to this book sober any longer. Thank you.
the more I'm reading this book, the more scared I feel for what's gonna happen in these last 150 pages. I have seen what I needed to see and every single person that I saw react to like the last 30 pages, the last chapter or whatever, they are unwell. And to be quite honest with you, I don't think I'm emotionally prepared or stable to be able to experience this. I am on page 445 right now and honestly, quite frankly, I'm getting a little fucking tired of every single chapter ending in a cliffhanger. How am I supposed to stop and do my daily activities when after every single chapter I think I'm gonna stop, it ends in a cliffhanger and I have to go to the next chapter? Rebecca, what are we doing here? Can I catch a damn break? I just wanna live my life without this book fully consuming me and that doesn't seem to be happening here. I need to work, but instead I am sitting here reading this book, waiting for a damn break, for somebody to catch a damn break, so I could close this up and leave it until the evening. And the worst part about this is that I will literally, one sentence I'll be giggling, the next se sentence I'll be like gasping for air, the third sentence I'm gonna be scared, and this is all within one fucking paragraph of the book. I'm seeing a pattern happening here and I just need to give you a little PSA announcement. There's absolutely nothing Rebecca can write in this damn book that will make me like Dane again. Absolutely fucking nothing. Mark my words.